I'm thankful to esteemed colleagues, uh, members of parliament, lawyers, academics, friends, uh, for joining us this morning uh, and to examine this highly critical and important subject. And, and it has already been highlighted, the gravity of the situation, that is. Um, now, ever since I took over the mandate as the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights in the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, in July of 20, uh, 2018, one of my principal concerns has been the almost complete absence of accountability and the prevailing culture of impunity in the Iranian constitutional, legislative and administrative framework. In my report to the UN Human Rights Council of March 2022, after having examined the absence of accountability, I informed the Council that while accountability for serious human rights violations represents a, a core obligation for states under international law, this was not the case in Iran. I wrote in my report to the Council, and I quote here, institutional impunity and the absence of a system, uh, of a system for accountability for violations of human rights permeates the political and legal system of the Islamic Republic of Iran. The absence of accountability derives from various deficiencies within state structures, including negation of principles of rule of law and separation of powers, end of quotation. My deep concerns as regards institutional impunity and the absence of a system of accountability were sadly once again proven correct with the tragic death in custody of the morality police of the 22-year-old Gina Masa Amini. Miss Amini from the Kurdish minority died in Tehran on 16th of September last year, three days after her arrest for allegedly failing to comply with the country's strict rules on women's dress code by wearing the so-called improper hijab. In the aftermath of her death in police custody, the entire country was gripped for several months with large-scale and nationwide protests under the banner of Women, Life, Freedom. However, instead of recognizing the legitimate demands of protesters, including ending the practice of enforced hijab and ensuring accountability for those involved in the killing of Ms. Samini, the state authorities characteristically reacted in the most repressive manner. Iranian police and security forces violently cracked down on protesters, revealing a widespread pattern of unlawful lethal use of force. I'm alarmed by the level of violence used against protesters, particularly targeting religious and ethnic minorities. Kurds and the Balochis, which are ethnic, uh, linguistic, as well as primarily Sunni minorities in a Shia-dominated regime, have been particularly affected by this violence. In one of the reported inc incidents on 30th of September last year, also called the Black Friday in the city of Zahedan in Sistan, Balochistan province. According to verified reports, um, the Iranian security forces shot and killed at least 95 persons, including nine children, with 400 persons injured. A majority of victims were shot in the head, heart, neck, and torso, demonstrating a clear intention to kill or to seriously harm people. Since uh, September 2022, protests that have started, at least 537 persons, including 68 children and 48 women, have been killed by security forces. At least seven persons have been executed on charges, including those of muharabe, which means enmity against God. Um, they have been executed. And the continuing violence against women and girls has also been shocking. This includes cases of deliberate killings, as well as sexual and physical violence. In addition, the state has weaponized the death penalty as an instrument of fear and repression. This was evident through the execution of well over 500 persons, of which less than 60 were made public. At least three persons sentenced to death as children were executed last year. In the light of the available evidence, that the, the evidence that is available to me, I had taken the view that very serious and grave human rights violations had taken place in the aftermath of the protests that began in September of last year. And I reported to the Human Rights Council earlier this year, and I quote here from my report, I say that the scale and gravity of these violations point to the possible commission of international crimes, notably the crimes against humanity of murder, imprisonment, and forced disappearances, torture, rape, and sexual violence and persecution, end of quotation. And now to the subject of the absence of accountability and the prevalent culture of impunity. 
It was tragic, but not surprising that the Iranian authorities have completely denied any responsibility for the tragic events that have taken place since last year in September. Instead, blaming the so-called foreign enemies of the country. No steps have been taken to establish the accountability framework in law or policy to allow effective channels for obtaining truth, justice, and non-occurrence of serious human rights violations, including arbitrary deprivation of life, mass arrest, torture, and physical and sexual violence of girls and women. State authorities have failed to conduct any independent, impartial, and transparent investigations into the death of Gina Masamini and have, and have consistently denied any misconduct on, or wrongdoing on their part. I'm extremely disturbed at the absence of any independent, impartial, and transparent investigations into the reported deaths of protesters, in particular women and children, in the context of protests and the current ongoing poisonings of girls in schools. Instead, the arrests, attacks, targeting of protest, protesters is aimed at punishing and silencing human rights defenders and civil rights activists, particularly in relation to women rights activists and those calling for accountability and an end to the culture of impunity. Indeed, knowing this culture of impunity and absence of any domestic avenues of accountability, I have strongly advocated the establishment of an independent international fact-finding mission, which was indeed established by the Human Rights Council after its historic uh, resolution of last year, 25th, uh, 24th of November. The absence of accountability and the culture of impunity prevalent in the Iranian legal, judicial, and administrative system has a deep, unfortunate, and painful history going back to at least 1979 and the Iranian Revolution. Since 1979, we have witnessed that the form of government known as the vilayat e faqih the so-called guardianship of the Islamic jurists, has consolidated executive, legislative, and judicial authority in the position of the supreme leader, which is not a popularly elected position. <coughs> Such absolute power negates the constitutional principles of separation of powers and rule of law. The current incumbent, Ali Hussein Khamenei, has assumed office of the supreme leader for over 33 years. Now, I turn to uh, some of the historic in, uh, historical tragic events and incidents um, and, and if you would allow me a few minutes on that. The mass executions of 1981, the repression and executions of religious minorities, and as already mentioned, including the Baha'is, the policy of enforced hijab, the use of revolutionary courts to eradicate political opponents, the deployment of terminology including Maharabe, enmity against God, and of Saad which means corruption on earth, extensive torture and summary executions of hundreds of children, which Lala has mentioned, remains pa part of a painful legacy of Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran. However, the gravest tragedy in the history of Iran is the enforced disappearances and the summary and arbitrary executions of thousands of individuals in 1988. Lela, did, did you uh, want to? Uh, Can you put the film? Um, no. no problem, please. Uh, I will you. continue, thank you. In 1988, thousands of these prisoners were extrajudicially executed pursuant to a fatwa issued by the Supreme Leader of Iran and implemented across prisons in the country. There are extremely serious concerns about the very grave crimes under international human rights law and international humanitarian law having been committed in 1988. These crimes include crimes against humanity, including torture, genocide, persecution, murder, extermination, as well as enforced disappearances of thousands of persons. The mass executions of 1988 um, have been followed by state authorities refusing to publicly acknowledge the killings and to disclose the fate of those killed and the location of their remains to victims' families and subjecting families to threats harassment, intimidation, and attacks. There has thus been the determination of the Iranian government to hide these massacres through false narratives and statements, distortion of historical data, and active harassment of survivors and family members of victims, as well as by hiding the evidence such as the destruction of mass graves, systematic concealment of the fate of the victims, not providing the location of, of their remains, or not providing family members information 
about the causes of their deaths is deeply troubling. Such concealment, in my judgment, constitutes enforced dis disappearances and a crime against humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, the massacres that, that resulted in, in summary and arbitrary executions, as well as enforced disappearances, have been a, a source of very serious concern for my mandate and other related UN special procedures. In 2017, my predecessor, the late Asma Jahangir, noted in her report to the UN General Assembly that, and I quote her, that overwhelming evidence shows that thousands of persons were sum summarily killed and highlighted that the right to a remedy includes the right to an effective investigation of the facts and public disclosure of the truth. In a 2020 communication to Iran, a number of the United Nations special procedures, including my own mandate, expressed strong concerns at, and I quote here, the alleged continued refusal to disclo disclose the fate and whereabouts of thousands of individuals who were reportedly forcibly disappeared and then extrajudicially executed in 1988. End of quotation. The communication goes on to note, and I quote here, and forced disappearances continue until the fate and whereabouts of the individuals concerned are established irrespective of the time past, and that the family members have a right to truth, end of quotation. So what about ending impunity and ensuring accountability? After 1988, um, Khomeini's willing executioners were promoted to high positions in politics and the judiciary, where many remain today, including, as has been mentioned, the current president, Mr. Ibrahim Raisi, who acted as a member of the Deaf Committee. One possibility to, to ensure accountability is the use of universal jurisdiction to try individuals for serious crimes, including crimes against humanity and other serious human rights violations. As some of you would know, in July 2022, a Swedish court convicted Hamid Nouri <laughs> for his role in the torture and mass executions in Iran during 1988, as the court found him guilty of war crimes and murder and sentenced him to life imprisonment. The other path is obviously the setting up of an international tribunal or an investigative mechanism to hold accountable all those who have committed grave crimes against the Iranian people. I have consistently called for accountability with respect to long-standing emblematic events that have been met with pers persistent impunity, including the enforced disappearances and the summary and arbitrary executions of 1988, as well as the protests of November 2019. As the international community, we, s we must stand together and we must demand an end to, to this culture of impunity um, uh, for, for, for the Iranian regime and demanding justice and accountability for the victims who have suffered for so long. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Professor Rahman, this is a book containing 20,000 names, particulars, photos of the victims of Iranian regime. From 120,000, this is only 20,000. In this yeah. book, you will see you would read stories. Mm -hmm. You would read the stories of the entire family being wiped out. You would see the photos and names of uh, school children, uh, children 10, 11 years mm -hmm. of age. You would see the entire family wiped out. You would see pictures of pregnant women. You would see the fatwas of Khamenei yeah. um, with his handwriting uh, um, the, saying that you know the, the virgins should go, go to heaven so they should be rape before execution. Mm. There are painful stories here, and on behalf of the families of the victims, I would like to present this to you uh, with the hope that it would help you in your mission to yeah. get justice done and to remove the impunity from Iranian regime. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. Uh, next, we were going to be hearing from one of my colleagues, Bob Blackman, who I understand is on his way, but obviously uh, isn't uh, with us 